Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 2 Samuel, uh, chapter 23, verses 20 uh, through 23. Uh, let's listen now to God's word. Just to let you know ahead of time, not trying to be sexist or anything like that, but this is a man's passage right here. Even more so, it's an Oregon man's passage. So, so let's listen now to God's word. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was a valiant man of Kabzeel, a doer of great deeds. He struck down two heroes of Moab. He also went down and struck down a lion in a pit on a day when snow had fallen. And he struck down an Egyptian, a handsome man. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but Benaiah went down to him with a staff and snatched the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah, the son of Je- Jehoiada, and won a name beside the three mighty men. He was renowned among the 30, but he did not attain to the three. And David, King David, set him over his bodyguard. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of this, his holy word. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we decrease, may you increase, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When you set the table, the knife always goes closest to the plate, the blade facing the plate, so it may always protect the spoon. That's how you always remember it. This is all I've done over the last seven and a half years at First Presbyterian Church in Klamath Falls. And that's just helped further set the table. I'm the 30th pastor in the last 128 years in the life of this church. I came here in 2004 and I'm number 30. Pretty soon I'll just be one of 31 and one of 45, and one of 78, and one of 128. Uh, I'm just one of many pastors who have been called to lead this church. Uh, And this is what I got to do for the last seven and a half years, is just further set the table. I didn't go out and cut the wood uh, that was, and then planed it, and sanded it, and formed it, and cut it to make the table. Uh, I didn't I didn't engrave the letters on here. It says, in remembrance of me. Uh, This cross even was here long before I was. There's a gentleman's name on here. 
George D. Grizzle. Anybody know who that is? 1872 to 1944. There's some things I've set well, other things I haven't set so well. You can tell from my angle, ah, the tablecloth is too far this way. It needs to be further back this way. Uh, I've got three place settings here, ah, but I got extra glass. I had two extra forks earlier. I don't know what happened to those forks, but... Um, you got them in your pocket, Randy. <laughs> you notice there's no food on the table. Uh, there's no chairs at the table. Uh, there's no candles. Uh, there's no dessert plates. There's no dessert forks. Um, there's a lot more that needs to be put on the table to complete it. And what I've had the privilege of doing is just helping set the table. Uh, what happens next? That's a great question. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll have an interim pastor for a while. A search committee will be formed uh, to search for number 31, uh, a new pastor. And that may take a while, but with God's discernment, God will lead the right person to, uh, to, to succeed uh, my pastorship here. Today, we look at Benea, uh, who was a lion chaser. Uh, lions in the animal kingdom are known as what? They are the what? King of the jungle. They are the king. And they uh, lay in wait or lie in wait. They, they're lurking, they're pouncing, they're tearing, they're ripping, they're terrifying, they're killing, they're maiming, and they're ravaging, and they're destroying. That's what lions do. So let me ask you this. Uh, what lions exist in your world? What lions pounce on you? What lions are you terrified of that you see them waiting for you and ready to pounce on you? What lions bring out the greatest fear? What lions in your life make you run the other way? Well, our question today is, what would happen that, uh, with the lions in your life? What would happen um, if instead of running away or hiding from them or trying to put them in a cage where you could manage them or just ignoring them altogether, what would happen if you chased them? You tracked them down. You hunted them. They became the hunted rather than being the hunter. Well, you'd be in good company if you became a lion chaser. We have lots of lion chasers in our scriptures. There's Samson, who was told that when a, a lion came rushing toward him, the spirit of the Lord came upon him in such a way that he tore the lion in pieces by his bare hands. Does that sound ridiculous to you? Does that sound, well, how could, how could that really happen? Well, when I did it that one time, it was, uh, no. <laughs> I had a, a young man in our youth group in Augusta, Georgia. Um, he was an African-American boy, and he, about 5'9", sturdy as a rock. Boy, he was strong. And uh, played on the football team, running back, great athlete. And he and his best friend, Dave Ness, uh, they went to work for Southwestern Books one summer. Has anyone ever worked for Southwestern Books? They're made out, of, out of Memphis, Tennessee. Basically, they get all these college kids and they just go and sell books all over the country. You're assigned to a certain city or certain neighborhoods or whatever. And you just go door to door, knock, knock, hey, would you like to buy some books? <laughs> and so uh, Dave and Leonard, best of friends, they, they were up in Minnesota. And Leonard said he faced more racism in Minnesota than he ever did in Augusta, Georgia. And so he would try and use his sense of humor to kind of put people at ease when they opened the door. And um, he'd say, hey, got some suntan lotion on special today, you know? Uh, but the racism and some of the disparaging remarks to him week in and week out, day in and day out, it just got kind of old after a while. And toward the second or third last week of his time up there, 
uh, he was knocked on a particular door and the gentleman came to the door, said some not so nice things to Leonard. He got ready to leave. And then the man sicked his dog on Leonard. And so Leonard just started running down the street. And for some reason, the man called the police to come and arrest Bernard, Leonard about, for, I guess, I don't know, bothering him or something. I'm not exactly sure. Leonard says, he doesn't like to tell the story, so I had to hear it from his friend Dave. But as he was running down the street, just something came over him. So I'm done. I'm not going to run anymore. I'm tired of being chased. And so he turned and he faced the dog, faced this lion head on. When the police arrived at the gentleman's house, Leonard was walking up to the door of the man's house with the dog in pieces. Just something came over. He said, I just snapped. Something came over me. I'm just not going to have this anymore. And just tore the dog up. He went from being the hunted to being the hunter. Do the lions in your world take you down? Do they pounce on you and hold you down? Do they claw at you? Are you tired of being the hunted? David, uh, when uh, King, well, he was just a little shepherd boy, David uh, is told that this man named Goliath uh, is just terrorizing the, the, Israels, the Israelites. He's like, he's not so big. I mean, when I tend the sheep, I handle lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, um, you know, so that's no big deal. He goes, I've taken, I've taken apart lions. I've killed lions. That's no big deal. Uh, there's Daniel who won't bow down to the king. He gets thrown into a, a den of lions. Then I get the impression he doesn't, he doesn't run from, he just stands in the midst of the lions. I love this passage. Daniel writes, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths and they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him and also before you, O king, I have done no harm. And then there's Benea. I love this story. You know, he's out there. He, I mean, he's a, obviously, he's a warrior of some, some, some kind, but he sees the lion and instead of doing what most of, of us would do, you know, I hope he doesn't see me, you know, or running the other way. What, is, what does Benaiah do? His eyes lock. Come on, buddy, let's go. You know, he's running towards that lion. He chases him into a pit, which would seem to me the lion would have an advantage in a very enclosed area, just mano a mano, lion against the man. I think the, man's gonna, the lion's gonna win most of the time. And you know what else it's doing? It's springtime, it's Klamath Falls, and it's snowing, okay? So he's on slippery, snowy ground, takes on the lion, kills the lion. Now, what may have seemed like, this is not a good situation, not a good spot to be, but maybe that was God's intention. Sometimes God's right place at the right time doesn't look like the right place at the right time. Have you ever, what, what bothers you more? The things you have done wrong or the things you wish you had done right? The things you've committed or the things you've omitted? You know, think about Peter when he walked out on, the, when he got out, walked on the water and uh, to Jesus. Everyone remembers what about Peter? him sinking in the water because he lost faith. He just, he got distracted by the waves. But you know what? He did get out of the boat. He did walk on the water a few steps. And you know, put that on your resume. Walked on water, you know? Uh, we do it all the time here in Klamath Falls in the wintertime. But, um, but, but what about the 11 disciples, the other 11? I bet they're kicking themselves. I wish I had done that. I wish I had taken the risk. I don't know about you, but when we take risks, whew, do you feel a little more alive when you take the risk? A little more, a little, you got blood flowing, whoo hoo, you know? Uh, boy, a lot, of things, a lot of things in my life I've done wrong. 
when I regret it, I'm remorseful, and uh, it drives me crazy. But boy, what drives me even crazier are the things I wish I had done. I was driving, driving up to Bend yesterday, looked over there, saw Mount Shasta, looked over there, saw Mount McLaughlin. I'm like, you know what? I'm so glad I climbed those mountains before I left Klamath Falls. I climbed them, I did it. I took the risk, it was great, a lot of fun. Satan is uh, referred to as a lion as well. Be sober-minded and be watchful, Peter tells us. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. The lions are starting to circle FPC. Ever since I announced that, you know, God's calling me to go to the University of Dubuque in Iowa, the lions have started coming out. And I, I, I've, I've heard this daily. Well, the church is just gonna go downhill without you, David. Well, that's a lion. It's roared a lot in the last few weeks. Well, I'm just not gonna go to church anymore since you're not gonna be the pastor there. Please do not ever say that to my face because I will go all banea all over you. I will just <laughs> take you down in the pit. It'll probably be snowing because it's still spring and I'll just, I'll take you out. Uh, just, and now it's on YouTube, that's great. Um, Well, attendance is going to go down. Oh, the budget's going to go down. Oh, wah, 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 wah. Roar, roar, roar. I don't know about you. I just see it makes me mad. I don't want to hear that. I don't even believe it. Because I'm not the church. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Holy Spirit is going to be here a lot longer than I will ever be here. I've told you since the day I got here, I will, I will disappoint you at times. And perhaps leaving here is disappointing. I'm just living up to my word, that's all. But the church faces lions. FPC, we are lion chasers. We are not the hunted. We are the hunters. And we chase down lions. We are now in a season of, of Lent which is those 40 days uh, before Easter. And I love this passage about Jesus. Jesus is a great lion chaser himself. It says that, that you know, he set his face toward Jerusalem. He knew what was gonna happen when he got there. He, he knew what was gonna happen. And this cosmic battle has been set up between him and Satan. And on that Friday afternoon, boy, Jesus just gets ripped to shreds the lion of death, the lion of the grave, the lion of the pit takes Jesus and just takes him down. That's just part of the story. Yeah, we know the rest of the story. On Easter Sunday, what happened? Yeah, Jesus oh, sits up, kind of shakes the cobwebs off, rolls the stone away. And when that stone rolls away, the lion of doubt, the lion of death, the lion of the grave, the lion of the pit is on the run. It has been on the run ever since. Uh, we don't have to run away from that anymore. We get, to run, we get to run toward that, not away from that. We need not fear. The Holy Spirit, it's here. Holy Spirit is here today, tomorrow, and forever. The one who says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you will hold that promise. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Don't let the lions surround this place. Chase them down. Don't let the lions of doubt and fear and change and all those things chase you away. Face them down. So the next time you see the lions prowling around the block here, uh, look them in the eye. Feel your heartbeat quicken a little bit. Feel the little beads of sweat rolling down your temples. Feel the adrenaline starting to build. Feel the muscles kind of tense. Feel the palms starting to get a little sticky. 
and then run. Run as fast as you can. Not away from them, but toward them. And when you run that lion down into the pit and it's snowing, then begin to roar. Roar with laughter. Roar with victory. Because you'll be in good company. And you will be. You will be victorious. Amen. Let us pray. My gracious God, we're, we're all face, facing our own lions today. We face them individually. We face them corporately as a church. And so, as the Spirit of the Lord rushed over Samson, so may the Spirit of the Lord rush over this place as we just face these lions head on with no fear, but with full courage. Watch over us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, after I'm gone, remember, don't knock the trees over. Golly. I believe this with my whole heart. Uh, you don't have to believe it. I'm not asking you to believe it. I'm just telling you what I believe with my whole heart. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. I've had, it's been an immense privilege and a pleasure and a joy to set the table with you. Get out the plates, put up the silverware, get the linen out. Make sure the cross is there. Make sure the glasses are full. It's been, I've had a blast. Uh, words will never be able to describe how much this church has meant to me personally and, um, and to my family. But we haven't even started eating yet. And I still got dessert to serve. You know, The best, I believe, is yet to come. So with that in mind, let's stand up and grab a hand next to you. You're holding hands with fellow lion chasers. Uh, and with all of you holding hands together, that's a pretty formidable group right there. Uh, and may the Lord, like he did with Daniel, place his hand and close the mouths of the lion so we do not hear them roar. So let's go forth in the world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak. Love and serve the Lord with gladness and with joy. Honor all people. And laugh often and fear not. And go forth knowing that the love of God, the Father Almighty, the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, the communion, and the power of the Holy Spirit is with you now and forever. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Go get them.